Hello, welcome and good evening. And today I have something completely different. I've got a telephone. And this telephone is roughly 35 years old. And um, yeah, it is outdated, but it still works. And I want to use it on my Wi-Fi router, but it has a problem. It only uses pulse dialing, which is dialing by doing some kind of clicks and pulses. And uh, modern routers only accept tone dialing, you know, these beep boop beep boop tones that you get when you press stuff on your number pad on your smartphone or on your landline phone, if you still have one. So we need to upgrade it, otherwise I can get calls, receive calls on this thing, but can't make any calls myself, which would be a shame, especially since cell reception in my flat is pretty poor, so I definitely want to have a landline phone and one from the 80s, obviously, because all the hardware behind me is at least as old as this phone. So let's open this up and upgrade it. This is the actual phone and yeah, um, this is the alternate uh, dial block. I'm not sure how you call this. Let's take a look at the bottom of the phone. And it doesn't show much. It shows the production date, January 1986. So it's already 35 years old or 35 and a half years by the time I'm making this video. And it's a Fetab 7511. The Fetab stands for Fernmelde Tischapparat or Telecommunication Desk App device or something. <laughs> it's a very German word which no one would actually use. And back then the German postal service would be managing all the phones. Nowadays it's all in the hands of the German telecom, um, which is also famous for the T-Mobile mobile network, which is pretty famous in the US too, I think. Uh, and it's now only semi-owned by the state, but also a private company. So this phone uses um, still a dial block with the uh, impulse valve. So it basically produces pulses to signal the numbers. And here we have the replacement dial block, which is the TWB71 or Tastenwahl block 71, made in 1286. So it's roughly a year younger than my phone. And it also says here, warning, it's a CMOS device, be careful with static electricity. And it's got a very nice brown, shiny uh, PCB at the bottom. Obviously wave soldered because you can see how the little protrusions here on the numbers are. And yeah, um, this should, this should, whoops, this should make the whole thing be able to use dial tones instead of the pulses which hopefully will make it possible to use it on my Fritzbox router so that I can actually dial out with this thing. Supposedly, the upgrade is pretty simple. There's a bunch of screws here in the corners for to be precise. And um, supposedly you just need to unscrew and unplug this thing and replace it. So we will do just that and hopefully the phone will work afterwards still. And we are inside and it actually looks much simpler than I expected. But then again, I didn't know what to expect. So here is the old Tastenwahl block. This is the bell with a huge um, solenoid and a huge lever to ring the bell. This here is the switch um, for the receiver. So this will um, yeah, latch the line, I guess, so that you can actually have a dial tone. There's another solenoid here. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a transformer. Probably it's a transformer, I guess. Probably needs some kind of different voltage or something. I would guess this is a big capacitor, probably. This is a huge resistor. Um, what's the value? I don't know the color codes, but we can measure. It's a huge resistor, probably for 
actually I don't have no clue. Um, don't know much about telephone networks. So this seems to be, oh, I should probably go to ohms. This seems to be 900 ohms, probably one kilo ohm with a bit of uh, inaccuracy here and there. There's another resistor there and that's all there is. I think I can see another capacitor below the keypad, but nothing more actually. And there's no screws. It seems to be clipped into place. I hope I don't break anything, but it still feels pretty soft, not that brittle. Um, I'm trying to very, very, very carefully to unlatch this. I'm not quite sure how. Okay, one moment, please while I try not to break this thing. Okay, actually it's pretty easy to unlatch once you put in a screwdriver like this. And it's still relatively spongy and in good condition. I think there's probably a lot of toxic plastic softeners in there <laughs> that still work after this long time. And look at this. This PCB layout is so much more complicated. So I see there's one IC over here there's something over there, probably the, maybe for the wiring or for the, uh, I think this is probably for the, for the numpad. There's probably an internal cable, but there's one IC and a few other discrete components. Here I can see one, two ICs. This is for the keypad, I guess, and a ton, a ton of different components. So this seems to be much more complicated, at least from a general standpoint. And um, this was made in 1185. So the whole device was made in January of 86. Uh, it's the TWB75 for the pulse styling. Um, we will of course keep it probably um, to be able to restore this device to its former glory once pulse dialing comes back into fashion. Um, so I won't give this away. Also, this was made by Hagenuk, which is a company that is, I think, still around, making handsets and stuff like that. Um, now we need to figure out how to unplug this weird plug, because I don't want to break it. Seems to be slightly more brittle, maybe. Uh, there might be some kind of latch on this thing. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Let's look at this plug here. So there's something that seems to be sliding over four wide pins. But I'm not sure how this latches onto the whole thing. Maybe I can just squish my... Ah, yes, okay. So the whole thing comes off if you gently pry it away with the screwdriver. That's okay. I think we can do that. Here we go. This is the whole assembly. It goes away. And in goes the new one. Here we go. And then we put in the plastic tab down here and the other one at the top. And hopefully that will be all there is to this whole upgrade. Let's put this cable under there. Looking good. So now Let's close the thing and test it.
Okay, so it's all um, back together and I turned around the number pad. You probably already noticed that it was upside down and that is of course not the way to go, although it might make it possible to mount it like this on the wall or something. But well, it's probably not, not a good idea. Um, yeah, so let's plug it in and uh, make it test style. Okay, so the phone is now plugged into the router and uh, we have the pulse dial block here and the tone dial block over here. And I used to use this phone with an adapter like this, which converts from the pulse dialing to the tone dialing, which works with almost any router, but not with my current one, which is the reason why I wanted to upgrade this thing. Now we can actually try to phone out and uh, what can we do with this uh, without giving away my private phone number? We can dial the uh, time announcement by the German Telekom and there's at least a dial tone, which you can hear hopefully now. And the uh, phone number for that is, well, you can figure it out. And I think there will be coming something. It's ringing, and we get something. Willkommen bei der Zeitansage der Telekom Deutschland. Guten Abend, heute ist Samstag, der 21. August 2021. Beim nächsten Ton ist es 21 Uhr 13 Minuten und 20 Sekunden. Well, there you have it. It works. We can call the time announcer or actually, in fact, any person on this planet. So this was a very useful upgrade, actually, because now I can not only get called, but I can make calls again with this 1980s lovely phone. And that makes me actually very happy. And um, yeah, I like the design. I like the orange color, obviously. And uh, I hope you like this short little video, too. So. Thank you for watching, that's it for today. Share, like and subscribe, all the usual stuff and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!